So now that we've talked about equations of circles, now we want to connect circles to lines. And you did equations of lines last year. You did draw, graphing equations of lines. You even did parabolas. So we're going to take the equations of lines, look at how we can find where they intersect, and we're going to look at how lines and parabolas intersect. Okay? Again, this is all review from algebra, so it should be very familiar to you. You should be able to handle all these questions so that when we come into class next class period, we can then connect it to what we've been doing with circles. So let's take a look at reviewing some of lines. So remember our lines, our equation for a line, the one you're used to is y equals mx plus b. Earlier in the year we did talk about some other equations. But the m was our slope and the b was the y-intercept. Okay, And we can use that to graph any line. So when I look at this line here, it's my purple line, my slope is negative 2, my y-intercept is 0, 3. Okay, So that means I can easily graph that. I'm going to go to my y-intercept, 0, 3, so that's going to be up here. And then I'm going to use my slope. Remember that
my y-intercept is 0, negative 3. So 0, 5 is up here. And that's going to be up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. I'll put that in here. My next one, negative 2 on the y. And my, oh, no, sorry, negative 3 on the y. And I'm going to come down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Read the wrong number there. And again, it's another case of, hey, these are really close. I'm not 100% sure of where they are. So how do we handle that? Okay. Well, the way we're going to handle that is we are going to solve these algebraically. So solving these algebraically, let's take a look at it. We don't need a graph for this in particular. You learned two ways to solve algebraically last year. You learned substitution as one method, and you learned elimination as another method. For this particular information, I'm going to focus on substitution. Because for what we're going to do later on, elimination doesn't work. So we're going to focus on a substitution method. The way substitution works is I just need to get this equal to either x or y, and I can put it in the other equation. Since I have an x by itself, I'm just going to move the y over. So this equals 6 minus 2y. Now I'm going to take this thing here and put it in place of x in that equation. So that means I have 3, 6 minus 2y plus 4y equals 28. That's an equation we can solve. Distribute my 3, 18 minus 6y plus 4y equals 28. Uh, Find my like terms, minus 2y equals 28. Subtract 18 on both sides, so that leaves me 10. So y is negative 5. Once we have that, I can go back up to here and get my x. x equals 6 minus 2 times the negative 5. So that's 6 plus 10, so 16. So my point of intersection is the point 16, negative 5. The other reason that we like the algebraic method, I can't even put that on those graphs that we had above. Okay, it's too far off the graph. So that's something we might want to look into. Okay, so the algebraic method will work all the time. The graphing method, not always going to work for us, right? We saw two examples here where the graphing method didn't work. But I can get an algebraic answer, even if it comes out as fractions. So why don't you try one of those? Try an algebraic method and solve this problem here. So in this problem, I need to solve for x or y. I got a little extra work to do. So let's get it in terms of x. Why not? 4x equals 3y plus 1. So x equals 3 fourths y plus 1 fourth. OK, it's fractions. No big deal. But now I'm going to take this equation and put it in for that x. Okay, so I get 6y minus 8 times 3 fourths y plus 1 fourth equals negative 2. It's actually, it's going to work out pretty well because 8 times 3 fourths comes out to be 6. 8 times 1 fourth is 2. And notice I carried that to negative 8 times a positive, so it makes it negative. Ooh, look at this. When I combine my like terms, something interesting happens. I get negative 2 equals negative 2. Huh, what does that mean? You did all the math correctly. What is happening? Well, we get a true statement. What that tells me, these are actually the same line. Okay, so that's an interesting fact. A true statement, in other words, something equals itself, the lines are the same line. If I got a false statement, if I got 2 equals 3, then I could say the lines don't intersect or something's wrong there, okay? All right, let's look at a parabola and a line. Parabola's a little tougher to graph because to graph a parabola, remember, we have to make one of those T-charts. You did this last year. 
x, y, and you choose some numbers, right? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And you got to plug those numbers into there. So you might need a calculator for this, plugging those in. So that's 4. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to go to my calculator. So that's, I know negative 2 squared is 4, minus a negative 2, minus 6, gives me 0. Negative 1 squared is 1, minus negative 1, minus 6, gives me negative 4. A 0 will give me a negative 6, that one's easy. 1 minus 1 minus 6, negative, wait a minute, negative 6 again, huh, interesting. And then 4 minus 2 minus 6, and I get negative 4. So there's my graph that I want to do. So I'm going to put those points on there. Negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 6, 1, negative 6, and 2, negative 4. So we can find our graph does something like that. And then we can graph our line. The slope of the line is 1. The y-intercept of the line is 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3, and I'll go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I'll draw in my line. Now it looks to me like it's at 3, 0, and back here at negative 1, negative 4. So it looks good, but I don't trust this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now double check things by solving algebraically. To do that, I'm going to use my substitution. So since I've already got it in y equals, I'm going to take this information here and do it there. Or as some people like to say, set them equal to each other. x minus 3 equals x squared minus x minus 6. Now I know I have an x squared, so I'm going to have to do some factoring. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That's going to give me negative 3. I'm going to subtract x on both sides, so negative 2x, and still equals 0. Don't lose the equal 0. I'm going to move it to the other side. I like it better over there. Now I'm going to factor. So x and x, 3 times 1, negative 3, positive 1. So my x values are 3 and negative 1, which is what I thought here, 3 and negative 1. To get the y values, i got to plug them back in. So y equals 3 minus 3, so that's 0. Y equals negative 1 minus 3, that's negative 4. So I get the points. When x was 3, y was 0. When x was negative 1, y was negative 4. There's my intersection points. You did this last year, I'm sure. Try one of those on your own, and then you'll try some problems. So taking a look at this, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and, and solve it. So 2x minus 6, x squared minus 8x plus 19. Again, uh, that's going to give me x squared. If I subtract 2x on both sides, that's negative 10x. Add 6 to both sides, so that's 13. Whoops, no, that's 25. And it equals 0. And now I begin factoring. Hey, this might look familiar to you. Minus 5, minus 5. There's only one solution at x equals 5. Because I got it the same thing twice. Perfect square trinomial, might look familiar. So now my y, 2 times 5 minus 6. So the y is 20, no, lies. 10 minus 6 is only 4. So when x is 5, y was 4. And you could graph that and check it. In fact, you know what? Let's look at a graph in utility and check it here on a graph in utility. Oops, extra screen. So my one equation was y equals 2x minus 6, and there's that line. My other equation was y equals x squared minus 8x plus 19. There's that equation. And the intersection, let's see if I do that, looks like they intersect at 5, 4. You can just barely see that point right there where they intersect. 
We'll talk about what that means, that it only touches at one point. You might know something about that already. Okay, so that brings us to our work that we want to do. Four practice problems. Go ahead and solve them algebraically, and then graph them to see if the graphs match up to what you're used to. Okay, handle these, come back in class tomorrow, and we'll connect this idea to circles. Okay, have a good night.